Xbox is on fire. We got confirmation of a big AAA game launching day one on Xbox Game Pass. More 60 FPS boost coming to select titles. Reviews for the Xbox wireless headset are out, and there's rumors of another acquisition. There's a lot here to talk about, so let's get into it. What is going on everybody? It's Randall419, the man with the million, back again with another video. I hope everyone's having a fantastic Monday, and if you guys could do me a huge favor, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and please hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I said it in the intro and I'm gonna repeat it here, Xbox is on fire. And I tweeted it out earlier, Xbox is killing it. All these great announcements that have happened in a very short span of time. Last week with the Xbox Bethesda the round table. Phil Spencer coming out and saying, we purchased Bethesda for you, the Xbox customers, to have more great exclusives on Game Pass. But it didn't stop there. They're continuing this momentum. And that's a word we're gonna hear about a lot, Xbox momentum. I didn't really think I would be making a video today. As you recall, yesterday I made a video about Outriders potentially being in Game Pass and a couple other smaller details. But today Xbox had a lot of announcements that as an Xbox customer who has seen the load times with the Xbox One, who believes that Xbox is about to have one of the best generations they've ever had, just brings a smile to my face knowing that Phil Spencer and the teams at Xbox are doing everything they can to change their perception around Xbox and the brand. And it seems like it starts with Xbox Game Pass. And I just wanted to point out that you know this Xbox momentum is real when certain people on social media start to change their stance about Xbox in general and are suddenly looking to get an Xbox Series X or a Game Pass subscription, even though they've been vocally anti-Xbox for some time now. Those people clearly lack the foresight to see what Xbox was going to do this generation, and it's just kind of funny to see it all happen in real time. So we do have a lot here to talk about. Xbox wireless headset review, views, more 60 FPS games hitting Game Pass and Xbox through FPS boost and updates to titles that are hitting today. There's yet another internet rumor surrounding Xbox and their next acquisition targets, which I'm gonna save for the end of the video. But first, we absolutely have to talk about Game Pass, how it's changing the perception of Xbox as a brand, and how it potentially could be the market disruptor and paradigm shift that Microsoft has been looking for to convince more and more gamers that the Xbox ecosystem is the one you need to invest in. So if you guys watched yesterday's video, I speculated that the Xbox Game Pass Twitter account was teasing that Outriders would be joining the service on day one. And today we absolutely got it confirmed by Xbox. On the Newswire blog, you can see here, it says, Outriders is coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one, but they also weren't finished. They also announced that Undertale, one of the most beloved RPGs of the last few years, is finally coming to Xbox and is going to be launching day one into Game Pass tomorrow on March 16th. The Xbox Newswire blog says, we all got a taste of Outriders with the recent demo, so I'm thrilled to announce that Outriders will be available on console and Android phones and tablets via Xbox Cloud Gaming with Xbox Game Pass on day one, starting April April 1st, and this is not an April Fool's joke, I assure you, Xbox Game Pass for console and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members can jump into this true genre hybrid from Square Enix, which combines brutal combat with deep RPG systems. Outriders is set in the distant future where players attempt to colonize a planet that they believe to be a new home for humanity. Turns out the planet doesn't want them there. Oops. A mysterious storm called the Anomaly burnt out all the tech that's more advanced than a light bulb, hyper-evolved the wildlife into ferocious monsters, and colonization efforts broke down into a bitter war of attrition for the last remaining resources available to humanity. Now, unfortunately, this game is not hitting Xbox Game Pass on PC, and I do think that is something that Microsoft needs to focus on, making sure that the console and PC offerings are a little bit more one-to-one, -one, which they'll do with their own Xbox and Bethesda releases in the future, but this is a huge moment for Xbox Game Pass. A lot of the naysayers that are out there on social media will say, Game Pass only has old games. The only games that actually truly go into Game Pass Day 1 are indie 
titles. But right here, Outriders, the Square Enix collaboration, getting this new co-op game into the service day one is not only going to drive new subscribers to Xbox Game Pass, is not only going to make sure that Outriders has a community of players day one, but this could really change where people decide to invest their money in an ecosystem. Because when you just look at it from a price perspective, if you're a member of Xbox Game Pass, you can play Outriders for free. If you didn't enjoy the demo, it doesn't matter. You can just download it and play it and play as much as you want, finish the story. If you really do enjoy the game, you can then purchase it. But if you're on a different platform like Stadia, PC, or PlayStation, this game is $60. And if you weren't too enthused with what you played with the demo, you probably were saying to yourself, ah, I'm not gonna spend 60 bucks. But then Xbox makes a deal like this. And you think to yourself, you know what? Maybe that's the place where I should invest in. Maybe Xbox Game Pass is a subscription service that I should have, whether it's on my Xbox console or on my PC in the future, because it's going to save me money. And since Outriders actually has crossplay. If you have a friend who's playing this game on PlayStation and they spent $60, they might be a little bit salty that their friend on Xbox is playing it for free. And that could have a domino effect where more people start to look at Xbox and Game Pass as something they need to have instead of something that might be useful to have. I also think this could be an incredible test case scenario for the viability of adding these big AAA releases day one in Game Pass, not only for Microsoft, but for other publishers out there. For Microsoft, they'll be able to gauge whether or not giving Square Enix a whole boatload of money to add a big game like this is worth it on their end. Like, how many subscribers join because of service? How many people are playing Outriders? All that stuff. But for Square Enix, they might be thinking to themselves, we weren't too sure on the success of this game, and the Game Pass deal for Square Enix will assure that a lot of people will be playing this game, and it makes the risk of it bombing a little less likely. But then there's other publishers that might be looking at it, saying to themselves, we're not too sure on our release of the game, and potentially putting our games in a day one on Game Pass might be more beneficial to us than selling individual copies. This could be that watershed moment for everybody in the industry to see how it all plays out. Let me know if you plan on now playing Outriders through Game Pass in the comments below. Now moving on from that, I wanna talk about 60 FPS because we got a couple announcements today that just makes me happy and honestly is going to make me go back and play some of these games I miss. Obsidian's Outer Worlds is not only getting its last expansion for the title, but also finally an update to the games that it runs at 60 FPS and I haven't really played much of it but now I definitely will and we talked about in the last video the FPS boost that is coming to the Bethesda titles you can see here on the Newswire blog they announced it today hot on the heels of officially welcoming Bethesda's world-renowned studios to the Xbox family we're excited to announce that five of the biggest titles from their vast catalog of games Dishonored Definitive Edition, The Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim Special Edition, Fallout 4, Fallout 76 and Prey will all be updated today to enable FPS boosts on Xbox Series X and Series S. And it's not just owners of these titles that get to take advantage of FPS boost. All these titles are available with FPS boost for Game Pass members too. So these 60 FPS updates for these games will be hitting right now. And I gotta say, I love the focus of 60 FPS and higher frame rates that the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are giving us this generation. Honestly, after gaming on both these systems, I can't go back to 30 frames. And I already felt that way before with the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro when they would give us the option for 30 and 60. I always chose 60, even if the game looked a little bit worse. So this excites me because yes, let's normalize 60 FPS in the titles moving forward. But the great Xbox news doesn't stop there because as you guys know, the Xbox wireless headset launches tomorrow. And I checked out some of the reviews from Windows Central and The Verge and people seem to really like it. Of course, it's $99, so don't expect the audio quality of the Astro A50s. But for that price, it seems to be packing a pretty damn good punch. So let me know what you think about all these cool announcements in the comments below. But lastly, we have to talk about this internet rumor about Xbox and their next acquisition target. So this article says, Rumor, Microsoft eyeing up Konami and Sega acquisitions to possibly invigorate waning Xbox console sales in Japan. Microsoft snapping up Sega is the rumor that will never go away, but now it seems that Konami could also be in the sights of the parent company, the Xbox Game Studios. Microsoft could do with the boost in Japan as recent sales figures reported 10 Xbox One consoles sold 
compared to 78,000 Nintendo Switch units. There's no denying when it comes to making acquisitions, Microsoft and its Xbox Game Studios are not shy about aiming high. The recent purchase of ZeniMax Media, the company that owns its software and Bethesda Softworks for a whopping 7.5 billion proves that Microsoft is actively and aggressively seeking to enhance its company portfolio and its vital Xbox brand. A popular tech commentator, who basically is just a guy that tweets, has indicated that the next companies that are being lined up for potential takeovers are the Japanese gaming stalwarts Sega and Konami. Microsoft and Sega have been linked for decades and the acquisition of the later by the former has been rumored for many a year. It would make sense for Xbox Game Studios to obtain Sega's specialist knowledge and experience in the console area and the Tokyo-based firm has certainly struggled over the last years in comparison to its Sega Genesis Mega Drive heyday. Konami has also been thrown into the again and the company would bring along valuable gaming IPs like Silent Hill and Metal Gear with any acquisition. Acquiring Konami and Sega would not only make Xbox a stronger brand in Japan, but it would also appeal to the millions of fans of the two companies in other areas of the world who happen to own an Xbox console. But Microsoft head Satya Nadella and Xbox chief Phil Spencer have made it clear that the acquisition of established game developers is the right direction to take, so maybe there will be some further studio expansion coming in 2021. Look, there's a reason I saved this for last and I probably won't even have it in the title everybody is always focused on the next thing instead of what is currently in front of them microsoft just completed the acquisition of bethesda but for a lot of people that isn't enough they want more studios more games and i understand that and yes microsoft is definitely looking for more studios and more publishers but the idea that konami and sega might merge or microsoft would buy both of them is a little bit too out there for me i'm sure microsoft would definitely be interested in sega for their japanese presence as well as what they do on the PC and that is a partnership that perhaps is being explored right now but I doubt it is close to one of those things that is confirmed. So while I agree that Sega might be a potential target for Xbox, I really don't think Xbox is interested in Konami whatsoever. They basically are getting out of gaming, they don't have any studios and while they do own some really historic gaming IP like Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill, they don't have any of the studios or the creative visionaries like Kojima that would work on those franchises that would make it worth it for Xbox to purchase them. So Konami gets a big no from me, but with Sega, sure, I could see Microsoft being interested in purchasing them or maybe having a Game Pass deal in the future. That one is more viable than Konami in my opinion. Anyways guys, that's the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Share this out on social media and tell a friend about the channel. Hit that notification bell if you always want to be notified immediately whenever I drop a video like this. If you want to take your support even further, you can always hit the join button where you will get access to channel badges and emotes for the Xbox 2 podcast we do every single Friday with Jess Corden from Windows Central. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Later, guys.